The so-called Helsinki Commission in the U.S. Congress has approached President Biden about Ukraine. It has urged him to give Poland permission to intercept Russian missiles in Ukraine. This was reported by The Hill, which reviewed the letter from the congressmen. Leaders of the bipartisan U.S. Helsinki Commission have urged Biden to give NATO ally Poland the go-ahead to extend its air defenses over Ukraine. The article says, the congressmen noted that in this case, the Poles will be able to intercept Russian missiles flying to Ukrainian cities and villages. Such a decision will save the lives of a large number of Ukrainian citizens and will not allow the Russian Federation to destroy the country's critical infrastructure. The letter signed by the committee's leaders, Democrat Joe Wilson and Republican Steve Cohen, says Poland should be given the authority to intercept and destroy missiles over Ukraine, especially those that threaten to intrude into Polish airspace. Ukraine has repeatedly called on NATO countries to help intercept Russian missiles. Warsaw is also not against such a scenario. Polish Foreign Minister Radoslaw Sikorski made a similar proposal in September 2024. The idea was rejected by then-NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg, who explained his position by saying that the alliance thus risks becoming part of the conflict, which it is trying to avoid at all costs. Since the start of the full-scale war, Western allies have provided Ukraine with their air defense systems, including the legendary Patriots. However, it has not yet been possible to completely close the Ukrainian skies from Russian missiles and bombs. There are so few installations for such a large territory. In Congress, both parties are criticizing the White House for its hesitation in providing military support to Ukraine. For example, it is outrageous that Biden refuses to give the Ukrainian armed forces permission to strike military targets deep inside Russia with long-range missiles. According to critics, such indecisiveness on the part of the American leadership provokes Russian dictator Vladimir Putin to even greater aggression. In this context, Poland's request to intercept and neutralize missiles over Ukraine is both necessary and urgent as a mechanism to support Ukraine and protect NATO's frontline borders, Cohen and Wilson said in the letter. Certain Russian units are increasingly refusing to advance in the Zaporizhia region, with such instances becoming more frequent, according to the Telegram channel of the partisan movement Atesh. According to agents from the partisan movement Atesh, certain squads from the 1,440th Motorized Rifle Regiment are refusing to advance in the Zaporizhia region. Those who refused have been detained by military police. Everyone understands that assaulting the Ukrainian defenses is a one-way street. Such cases are becoming more frequent. The message states, The Atesh movement noted that in light of the situation, the Russian command is planning to deploy new units to the specified direction and replace the formations that have retreated with conscripts. This is happening against the backdrop of assurances from military political leadership that conscript soldiers would not participate in the special military operation. The Partisans report. Recently, several Western media outlets reported that Russian forces allegedly planned a major offensive aimed at capturing Zaporizhia. The Russian forces have intensified their strikes on the city using guided aerial bombs. Meanwhile, the Deep State Service of Ukraine noted that Russian forces have taken control of the village of Levadny, located near the border of Zaporizhia and Donetsk regions. The Ukrainian armed forces confirmed the enemy's success in that area. The head of the Zaporizhia Regional Military Administration, Ivan Fedorov, warned that the Zaporizhia region may not have electricity in the winter. He urged to prepare for the worst-case scenario. Ukraine is building second and third defense lines around Zaporizhia region, according to regional governor Ivan Fedorov. In his interview for a national TV, he revealed that the military completed construction of the first line of fortifications in mid-summer. The governor stressed the effort can help turn Zaporizhia into a fortress, adding that the defense lines are being given constant upgrades that will include not only structures that protect from guided bombs and artillery, but also anti-drone protective elements like nets. Construction on the second defense line nears completion, while the third line of defense should be operational within weeks. The military rolled up their sleeves to finish work to meet the deadlines set by Ukraine's general staff. Iran's foreign minister stressed Tuesday his country will neither delay nor rush its response to Israel's first-ever open attack on his country. 
Abbas Arachi vowed Israel will face consequences for the attack during a meeting with foreign diplomats in Tehran. The Israeli regime will face the consequences of its miscalculation about Iran's power, capability and the willpower of the Islamic Republic of Iran, he said. Israel attacked military targets in Iran with pre-dawn airstrikes Saturday in retaliation for the barrage of ballistic missiles the Islamic Republic fired on Israel earlier this month. The Israeli military said its aircraft targeted facilities that Iran used to make the missiles fired at Israel as well as surface-to-air missile sites. The attack damaged facilities at a secretive military base southeast of the Iranian capital that experts in the past have linked to Tehran's one-time nuclear weapons program and at another base tied to its ballistic missile program, satellite photos analyzed Sunday by the Associated Press show. However, Arachi said the attack only caused limited damage. Limited damage was caused to some of the points hit and necessary measures were taken immediately to restore the damaged equipment to operational state, he said. Arachi also insisted that Iran is not seeking conflict or war, but rather stability and peace. چنان که بیشتر پیشتر از طرق مختلف هشدار داده بودیم جمهوری اسلامی ایران با ابتنای بر حق ذاتی دفاع مشروع وفق ماده 51 منشور ملل متحد حق قانونی خود برای پاسخ مقتضی به این تجاوز آشکار را کاملا محفوظ دانسته و رژیم اسرائیل عواقب اشتباه محاسباتی خیش در مورد قدرت توانمندی و اراده جمهوری اسلامی ایران را در خواهد یافت البته در انجام این مهم جمهوری اسلامی ایران نه تعلل خواهد داشت و نه شتاب زده عمل خواهد کرد جمهوری اسلامی ایران بر خلاف رژیم حاکم بر اسرائیل به هیچ عنوان خواهش تن... خواهان تنش درگیری و جنگ نیست و دستان خود را برای برقراری یک ارتباط سازنده برادرانه و صادقانه با کشورهای منطقه با هدف برقراری ثبات، امنیت و آرامش در منطقه دراز می کنند. با توجه به آمادگی و خوشیاری نیروهای مسلح جمهوری اسلامی ایران و عملکرد به موقع پدافند هوایی کشور، خسارات محدودی به برخی نقاط مورد اصابت وارد آمد. که بلا فاصله اقدامات لازم برای بازگشت تجهیزات صدمه دیده به مدار عملیاتی صورت پذیرفت.